Hello, I just had a lesson with Uncle G on real estate. Here are my 100 lessons learned on real estate deal. Hi, I'm Ria and let's begin. Number one, wherever I am, I am always looking for deals. Number two, I am trying to collect data all over the world because what happens in Singapore, Dubai, affects other parts of the world. Number three, how do I get the owner to have a conversation with me? This is the trickiest. How do you communicate to a seller? Fourth, when we go places, we rent in homes because short-term rentals are affecting markets now. Fifth, every single market, whether you can find a deal or not, has a deal. It comes with a lot of problems. It's like a cat. It's cute and it has fleas. Six, there is one deal. Do one deal at a time. Look at 20 deals to get one deal. Look at 100 deals to get one deal. Seventh, look at the underwriting. Eight, look for something that when you see it and you see it the second time and third time, I remember that, you may not get it the first time. Ninth lesson, real estate is not something you're going to do a part of your career and you're going to be done doing it. This is something your kids could end up doing. Your grandkids could end up doing real estate. Tenth, there's deals he looked at and put it in a folder and not buy it for six years and come back six years from now and buy it. Eleventh, once you see a deal and it pings you three times, you have to pay attention to it. Two people tell you, that's a consensus. Twelve, you want a broker even when there is no broker. Thirteenth, when you call the seller or broker, how do you sound sharp in the mark in the making the offer? A, set the hook. The most important thing in a real estate deal because it's hard for a broker or seller to call you back. Why? They think the next caller is a looky look and every bottom feeder goes to the area where there is cheap deals. Don't be a bottom feeder. You will not get respect. You don't want to set the price in the first call. Be positive. Be positive about the property, even with a laundry list of problems. Sell yourself. Your job is to sell when you are a buyer. This is an important little trick. You have to sell yourself to them. I know it does not make sense. You have to sell you to them that you are the buyer. The most important thing in real estate is not the price. The most important thing in real estate is closing the deal. The most important thing in real estate from the seller's standpoint is who can close. The number of units is the most important part in the formula. However, if you cannot buy the real estate, you don't have any units. Thirteenth, if they trust the buyer, even when the offer is slightly lower than the highest bidder, or when the buyer has a relationship with a broker and has din done deals together before, has relationships with them before, the seller will sell to the buyer less than what the other, the other buyer's offer is. 14. Set the hook. I am here and I look at your property. I love, love, love the property. It's perfect for me. And this is called the first date phenomenon. Projecting the future is not lying. It's a perfect size for me. I have the debt ready. I have the team. The due diligence can be short. I know the market. I know the rents. I know the place. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. I love it, love it, love it. What do I need to do, sir, to buy the deal? You cannot oversold yourself. At this point, you need to know the price. 
the rent for each unit. $800 a month for rent per unit times the number of unit. Fifteenth, what the seller wants for the property does not matter. The price is all made up. Sixteen, I need to know what the broker thinks to get the deal done because what they want and what they will take are light years apart in most cases. Seventeenth, the best way to not get involved to what somebody will take is don't ask them what they want. Eighteen, what is the price expectation? Or nineteen, what is the valuation that you as a broker put on? It's called BOV, Broker's Opinion of Value. And usually the brokers set three, high, medium, and low expectation. 20th, what else besides pricing does the seller has the expectation on? Is it term? Is it timing? Does he want to get out of the deal? 21st, the first sell is to the broker and not to the seller. 22nd, my broker and my lawyer are similar. If you want the broker, your broker and your lawyer to sell it to the other side, you cannot tell your broker and your lawyer the full truth. You can only tell them the truth that they can sell. Just because they are on your team, it does not mean that they can handle the truth. From Tom Cruise movie, 23rd, sell Ryan to sell Robert because people are honest. Honesty is an asset and also a liability. Their asset becomes their liability. Because they are so honest, they become manipulated because they are so honest. 24th, a person's liability becomes your asset. We are dealing with personalities. We are dealing with negotiation strategies. It's the awareness of the environment. If it's dangerous, you need to know instead of being naive. 25th, never expect anybody to tell you the truth. 26th, pitch to the broker. You don't know me and I don't know you. Call him with his first name. I'm going to be there Monday and I want to see this property. I didn't expect you to pick up the phone today because most agents don't. You have a piece of property and I'm very interested in it. It's a perfect size. I can get the debt. I can close in 60 days or less. I need to know when you can show it to me. Hey, let me ask you something. What kind of expectation does the seller has for the closing date? Why did Uncle G go with the closing date versus the price? Because price is not the most important thing. If price is not the most important thing, why do we bring up price all the time? That's what we talk all, majority of it. If you don't own it, you can't make money on it. Quit stealing everything. 27. You're worrying on the least significant part of the deal. The debt matters more than the price. 28. These deals are controlled by market. The more expensive you get, the less chance you have of getting ripped off. Why? There's too much money involved. There's too much people involved. Appraisers, Fannie and Freddie Mac, the big banks, life insurance, they're all looking at it. There's a history on the property. There's a footprint into the property. 29th, you call the broker and say, I'm here for you. When can you show me the property? Everything is to make the job of the broker easy. The last thing they want to do is to show the property again. 30th, these are the questions to ask the broker. So I am not surprised. What do I need to know about the property? How would you rate the location? You want the broker to look professional, even though you are an expert. You want to make them present the professional they need. 
How would you rate the location? How would you rate the asset? What can you tell me about deferrals? How much money would you spend there if it was your money to get it in perfect condition? If you have an unlimited budget, what would you spend the money on? What would you fix first? 31st, go direct to the listing broker or to the seller. Do not have a broker on your side. 32nd, your job is to sell, sell, sell. 33rd, watch, watch the last dance with Michael Jordan and pretend Michael Jordan is the real estate guy. One of his coaches told him that, Michael, there is no I in team. And Michael said back, there is I in win. 34th, winning is what you're doing when you get a deal. They actually call it, you won the deal. 35th, remember the three things, set the hook, be positive, sell yourself. 36th, question, there is no history of buying a deal and you want to buy a deal. Answer, don't worry about the past. I want you to become a holograph of the future. I'm an expert real estate guy. I haven't bought in your market yet. I want to buy a deal in your market. I have the cash, I'm ready to go, I'm willing, I'm ready, I'm able. When can I see the property? I love, love, love your property. 37th, Uncle G may ask these same questions to the same guy every time he meets him. These are the questions to ask the broker. So I'm not surprised. What do I need to know about the property? How would you rate the location? How would you rate the asset? What can you tell me about the deferrals? How much money you spend there if it was your money to get it in perfect condition? If you have an unlimited budget, what would you spend the money on? What would you fix first here? Is the numbers going to be legit? What do you know that I do not know? If everything lines up, I'm a buyer at this number. 38. He thinks there is some agents out there that thinks Uncle G has dementia. Uncle G asked the broker not because he forgot, but because it's to find out if the broker is honest. 39. The letter of intent. Uncle G doesn't really like formal LOI or letter of intent. He does it because the expectation from the broker is something formal. What he does is he personalizes it with something handwritten. I can shorten the due diligence in 20 days. 40th, the letter of intent is non-binding. The deal is senior to the contract. The agent does not collect his money if you all go to court. The owner does not collect his money if you go to court. The buyer does not get the property if you go to court. Nobody wins if you all go to court. The deal is senior to the contract. Don't worry about what the contract says. 41. Another pitch. You tell me what the owner wants and I'm going to do everything I can to get there. I'm sorry that the seller didn't tell you the whole truth. I was straight with you on the whole deal. Do you guys want to go into the deal or do you want to get into the lawsuit? 42nd, the deal is senior to the contract. You got to know that. 43rd, the most important thing in real estate is to know you have a good piece of real estate. 44th, do we want this deal? Can you answer the first question? Do we want this deal? It's an outside cat and it has fleas. Do I want it in my house? Is it worth the trouble? 45th, how do you sell yourself if you are a first-time buyer? Don't be a first-time buyer. Project yourself like a veteran expert real estate person into the future. Don't tell anybody it's your first deal. There is no value in it. It does not help anybody. It doesn't make them feel any better. 46. 
If you want to get a loan on something, don't tell them that your credit isn't good. You can't go in not knowing. You have to go in with confidence. 47th, you should be able to provide proof of funds when you go into the deal. Owners or brokers don't take your call the second time. 48. If you can't buy the deal the first time, they are not losses. They're all libraries. They're all information. You can buy it the second time around. 49. Once you know it's a screamer deal, finding the money will not be your problem. Because if it's a steal, you will be able to pitch it as a steal. That's what we should be looking for, steals. 50th, there is not a day that goes by that I don't look for deals. 51, I need confidence that's telling the truth. You have to remember that you have a broker that's selling a deal. 52nd, everything that you have done in your life, there is a time in your life that you have never done it before. 53rd, chicken or the egg, which comes first? Do you get the deal or do you get the money first? Answer, get the deal. The money follows the deal. 54, builders build and they sell it. They're called merchant builders. That's how they make their money. 55, you should be underwriting deals that you cannot buy. 56, have a letter come from the buyer personally and from your broker as well. Don't depend on your broker to do everything. Not all brokers are aggressive. 57. If you know the seller, go meet him personally and drop the letter. Ask the seller to mentor you one hour a month. I want to become who, who you are. 58. Everybody sells. 59. Everything is for sale. It's just when. 60. When they are going to sell, they are going to sell to the person they like. 61. We ask too many negative questions and we can't buy the deal. 62. The deal is more important than the contract. 63. If you don't get the deal, you don't make the money. 64. You need A to Z checklist in advanced training. 65. You need to have tremendous discipline. 66. If they are not raising rents, they are not taking care of the property. 67. Get it under contract and work the deal. 68. Don't try to change people on the first date. 69. Don't point out any shortcomings on the first date. You might not get a second chance. 70. There is no shortage of money. You have to get your mindset fixed. 71. Know the rent and the number of units to get the strike price. 60% of the net operating income and allow 40% of expenses to get the price. Know the numbers. The numbers are the same. The variable is how you present yourself and it's not the money. 72nd, I love mobile parks. How is it similar to real estate? It's a piece of land with a piece of property above it and you get paid. 73rd, where do you find the deals? ARA, Cushman Wakefields, CRB, Marcus and Millie Chap, Newmark, LoopNet, NMHC.org. It's the National Multifamily Housing, and it has top 200 owners in the country. There's also deals in off-market listings and drive-bys. 74. Drive-bys is what everybody should do. 75. The good stuff never hits the internet. 76. The deals he buy has one broker. Never two. 77. Every apartment building is online. You want to start a business? Teach apartment owners how to use social media. 78. 
call the broker that didn't sell the property. 79. Income is income. Some income is not dependable. 80. You need to be in real estate where your mayor, governor, senator protect your right to own. You need the right to own the real estate and do what you want with it. If you cannot raise the rents, it's not yours. If you cannot evict, it's not yours. If you cannot fill people in it, it's not yours. It looks like it's yours, but it ain't. Be willing to move. 81. You're going to find out you have the credit, you have the money, you have the wherewithal, you have the net worth, but you don't have the management experience. 82. You may also be working with the wrong bank. The bank won't tell you we can't do this loans. Instead, they will tell you that you are not qualified. 83rd. For 50-50 partnership, somebody has to be in control. 84th. What's the worst with one general? Answer. Two good ones. 85. How do you protect yourself in a partnership? Answer. Have control. 86. What else are you looking to determine market supply? Cranes in the air, facts, the population, how many rentals, how many single families. 87. Do not get overwhelmed. This is a simple game. 88. If you cannot invest time and energy, you are not serious about the game yet because you are going to spend millions and millions in real estate. 89. Start thinking big game, not one deal. You're going to buy 20 deals, 40 deals, 60 deals. Some will do better than others. 90. You have to go in everything knowing that I'm going to be successful doing this. It's a great asset. They don't disappear. No technology will make them go away. 91. 30 years from now, there are more renters in America than there are today. 92. How many believe that this is true? How much money do you have now to buy for a house? How much can you afford a month? How dependable is your job? When are you even going to go back to work? Do you think there's even going to be any airline pilot in America buying a house in the next two years? Do you think any executives in Mandalay Bay Hotel buy a home? They got laid off. 93rd, the rental property have cash flow. They pay you every month. There's depreciation. There's appreciation. 94th, every broker has got another deal. What else do you have? Where can I find it? 95. Who's influencing this deal? Who do you think is a perfect buyer for this property? Why would you give me this deal? Who's your favorite? How many buyers do you have? How many are real buyers? Where am I on the list? 96. Uncle G had a lost deal to a group that has to raise the money and offered less for it. Do you know why? 97. Why? Because he didn't have the relationship. 98. Uncle G lost the deal once because he posted it in Instagram and he got over it. Do you know how? Answer number 99. Bad. B-A-D. Buy a deal. 100. Always, always, and forever sell yourself. Remember, without the deal, you cannot make the money. I know it was long, folks. It's 100 lessons learned. So I hope you learned something. Take care and God bless.